bit of a ho-hum weekend in terms of the Rugby League World Cup. Lots of games played, significant results, not really. A lot of thrashings. As we're kind of in that stage now, aren't we? The settling period before the quarterfinals. And I suppose what's most significant is that Tonga and Sama appear to be on track for what will be one hell of a quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I think I think we might have mentioned it last week or the week before that both those sides are probably, they need a game or two or, or a couple of weeks together to sort of figure things out. Um, you know, I wasn't willing to, to rule out uh, Samoa after they were thrashed by England, but uh, they certainly certainly did the job against Greece the other day. And um, yeah, if they if they meet in the quarters, um, you know, that's, uh, that's that's one of the games of the year to be sure. To be, uh, to be sure. Yeah, what can we read into 84-0 for Australia over Scotland? Um, New Zealand putting 68-6 over Jamaica. Samoa 72 points. I mean, England thrashing France, I suppose, was the most significant result, but we don't really know whether that French side is the same French side that turns up the next week, do we? Yeah, no, like, you can't read you can't read too much into it. And, um, you know, even some of those, you know, the Kiwis and the Kangaroos lineup is probably not going to be the same come the knockout stages of the tournament. Um, you know, it's and it's there's been a lot of talk around. You know, that they should reduce the number of teams in the comp to 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 you know get away with this. But you look at any tournament. You look at the football World Cup. There's going to be five nil, six nil score lines. Rugby World Cup. There's this, this these kinds of things as well. It's all about um, exposure and it's about uh, you know experience on the big stage for some of these these uh, minnow sides, I suppose you call them. Um, and I guess yeah, for the for the big sides, it's about combinations and, and not, not picking up injuries but um, you know the, the other day you had Lebanon play Ireland that was a pretty cool game Wales Cook Islands as well um, so in and around the, the thrashings which you know will draw the most eye, eye, eyeballs because you know everyone's from New Zealand or Australia and they'll watch the kangaroos and the kiwis um, you, you have a few of the diehards maybe I'm out on a limb by myself here but you know getting up to watch France grief the other day was was pretty cool no, I mean, that's, this is the best thing about it. I mean, if you're into the tournament and you love it, I mean, you, you will actually watch these games and you'll get something from it. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at those fixtures. I'm even looking at, at, at week three, New, New Kiwis play Ireland. Um, England have got Greece, Australia have got Italy. Tonga and the Cook Islands looks like a hell of a match itself, doesn't it? Uh, Papua New Guinea play the Cook Islands tomorrow. But again, um, it's just... It, yeah, I mean, I, I, now that it's started, you want to see the big... I want to see Tonga play Australia. I want to see us play England. I want those fixtures, and I suppose I've just got to be, be a bit more patient. Another week or two. Another week or two, and we'll get there. Um, and, and look, in another, on another sort of tangent, uh, seeing Del and Watane Zelezniak the other day just carve up, I haven't seen him really enjoy his footy for a little while at the Warriors. So, you know, it's good to see him... Um, playing well and enjoying it and, and carving up. Um, and, yeah, it won't, it won't be too long before we see, you know, your, your, your big dogs um, coming up against each other. And um, I, the other the other thing I've got to point out is, is the weird sort of factor around the ticket pricing because you've got games where, you know, in small stadiums and, and there's only, you know, quarter full, maybe 5,000 people there. And people have been talking about how the, the ticket prices are, have been pretty high. Um which apparently overall the, the revenue raised from tickets is, is through the roof because they don't need to sell as many, but it looks pretty pretty bad on TV. Let us talk then about the T20 where we just gave you an absolute towel up the other night. <laughs> Go on. I mean, that's, that's the first time New Zealand have won a game of cricket, any form since 2011, and this is in Australia since the Hobart Test. It's over a decade. That's wild, isn't it? That's why we savour these wins so much. Exactly. I feel I was owed that because I've seen a lot of losses. Um, I've seen the Black Cats lose a lot of cricket matches in Australia. Um, went down to the Boxing Day Test in 2019. Oof. We were pummeled. Yep. Uh, drove down to the, the World Cup final at the MCG. It was over after five balls. Um, various other, other games. We went down to Canberra one year. Um, they put 300-something on us. Um, so it was bloody good. And look, you talk about you talk about one-sided, lopsided matches. It can happen against you know, when you're playing two of the best teams in the world. Uh, it's not just when you're playing Ireland at the, the Rugby League World Cup. The biggest sporting story in Australia at the moment, though, seems to be about Netball Australia and not the Diamonds beating the Silver Ferns again comfortably to take that Constellation Cup. But the sponsorship row that's going on, and then you've got the Pat Cummins thing with that Linter as well. 
How are Australian sports fans looking at this? I've got a lot of sympathy for that player, a lot of empathy for that player, Wallen. But at the same time, it just yeah, when when athletes start deciding what is and isn't on the front of the shirt, and then that affects multi-million dollar deals for a sport that could have repercussions at every single level that it is played. Oh, it's a man, it's a it's a messy, murky situation. You'd hope that it could be resolved. It doesn't look as though it's going to be, though, does it? You nailed it. It's it's messy and murky, and I, I don't know whether it will get resolved because Netball Australia, um, in particular, have been struggling financially for a number of years. And and just a couple of months ago, they were, you know, four million something dollars in debt. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's a really interesting one because, um, you know, you know, on one level, yeah, there's fifteen million dollars coming into your sport that is financially struggling and it's not just going to help the diamonds it's going to help the grassroots and tens of thousands of kids wanting to get into the sport as well um and, and keep it keep it high profile keep it um relevant uh but on yeah on the other hand is you're looking at sort of moral sort of um issues and, and then it comes down to you know single players and you know they have a you know the history of sport i suppose you, you've just sort of it's been shut up and play and now we're, we're seeing that players um you know here and overseas and netball rugby cricket wherever they've got a they've got a platform and they've got a voice and now they're using it um you know for, for, for various sort of various sort of uh you know things and you know what's the point of having a platform if you're not going to use your voice for for good if you if that's what you think and um yeah no look, it's a very tricky one and, and i'm a little bit I'm a little bit hesitant to sort of lump in the Pat Cummins thing with the netball thing. I think it's two very different situations on, on the surface. It looks very similar with the uh, Linter Energy, but I mean, it, cricket is, you know, it's, it's the national the national game, and um, I, I don't know how much of a say really Pat Cummins had in that. Um, whereas, yeah, netball is netball is struggling, and um, you just hope that sort of, you know, maybe maybe by by this being in the in the in the headlines in the spotlight. It does enough to, to you know lure another another sponsor or another couple of sponsors with with some deep pockets to to back the game, but um, it's messy and it is murky, and um, yeah, there's still a few more twists and turns in this one. Well, Brendan, you know the thing is, Brendan Bradford with us from Code Sports AU. The thing is, is that look, there the, the two main things that I see in this: Our big corps use sport to sports wash themselves and they've done that for years you know we've got mcdonald's kfc we've got sugar fizzy drinks we've got alcohol tobacco gambling we've got all of these things attached to sports right and most of the time everyone looks the other way because the athletes get paid they get handsomely paid and they know that that's where they're you know the, the bread is buttered from those guys it's not from ticket sales these days you look at the tournaments going on across the world the t20 some of the games are sold out most of them aren't uh, rugby women's world cup most of the grounds aren't sold out rugby league world cup there's a good set of fans in there most of the most of the grounds aren't sold out NPC here no one goes to any of the games. It's all about television rights and it's all about big sponsorships. And so I understand why the corporates want to get involved. And then you start sitting there going, okay, well, what do we do? Do we pick apart every single company and every individual in those companies and all the things that they've said, the decisions that they've made? If that's the case, no one's sponsoring anything because there's always going to be somebody upset. But this one is a lot is a lot more personal than that because you're talking about an Aboriginal woman, third one to play for the Diamonds, first in two decades. And, you know, what Gina Reinhart's father said 40 years ago is just so appalling and offensive. The thing is, you know, I, what I hope in these situations, so, Brendan, is that we can all agree on that. And I always think maybe a bit of dialogue, maybe talking about it, brings it out in the open and it gets acknowledged finally. And you can still have that sponsorship. You know, that's what I think would be the perfect scenario rather than to say, OK, we don't want it. Because really something your old man said 30 years ago or 40 years ago should not be visited on you that's not you saying that and i don't think that i don't know what gina reinhardt is like as a person but to me if my old man said something 40 years ago you know i'd say well dad you're an old racist old sod if that's the case but he's dead but i'm just saying that i don't own that it's not me that said it do you know what i mean yeah and i think that's that's probably what's been lost in the whole sort of thing is that the actual issue <coughs> pardon me the actual issue we haven't really spoken about it and 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 you know, discussed what, what she's sort of standing up for. It's all about oh, they've lost fifteen million dollars uh, in sponsorship, and, and is that the right thing? We, there, there's got to be a way that we can have grown-up discussions around being able to say, hey, I don't agree with this, but not 
not having this you know th- these things aren't shouldn't be mutually exclusive you, you should be able to um you know be sponsored by or, or you know play a fifa world cup in qatar or play you know live golf backed by the saudis and uh, and still be able to speak up and and have adult conversations without you know everyone kicking the you know what are you throwing the toys out of the out of the pram or out of the you know the push here um you should we should be able to move on from this but um, it looks like we're we're bogged down in the in the sponsorship side of things. Yeah, look, and and I don't know, you know, what the deal is with that particular company, and I know that you know now it means that um, the Western Fever have lost their sponsorship as well. Uh, you know, so as far as netball goes, a sport that struggles to get money in Australia, you know, you look in the gift horse in the mouth, and and all of a sudden telling it to get lost. Um, so, you know, and that puts enormous pressure on this particular player because, I mean, apparently she hasn't spoken publicly. This is all stuff she's actually just said to her teammates who've taken, picked up the, the baton on her behalf. And I could just imagine, you know, the enormous pressure she's under now because, I mean, it's not like she's responsible for what happens to the whole sport. But, and I hope that, that that doesn't turn around and that she's made to feel like that because you know, that would be completely wrong as well. There's got to be somewhere where adults can sit down, I agree with you, talk about this somehow and resolve something, isn't there? Absolutely, and, and again, like yeah, like you say, like I haven't really heard her speak, or you know, how strongly does she feel around this? And, and, and if she, even if she wanted to be put in the middle of this, and, and but all the commentary, all the comments, all the uh, the headlines are around her and around you know making her almost the scapegoat yep. for, for certain yep. sections of the of the commentary, I suppose. And um, yeah, like like you said, uh, you know, similar to you know what we spoke about about a month ago with the the rainbow jersey situation at Manly, um, we got to be able to get past this this you know he said she said outrageous headline sort of situation and be able to sit down and have a you know grown up conversation, just get everything out in the open without you know one side having to lose completely and you know the other side winning completely. We've got to be able to make compromises with these sorts of things because. No, that's that's life, isn't it? Like it's it's not just sport either. It's 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 everywhere. You, you don't always get one hundred percent what you want all the time, and um, yeah, you, you got to make compromises. And look, and to be perfectly fair, mate, I mean, you know, anyone who maintains that sport and politics don't mix, well, they're living on another planet. You know, you go back to the Berlin, Ol- oh, Berlin right. Olympics, Tommy Smith, John Carlos, the you know the Springbok Tour eighty one, Black Lives Matter. I mean, you know, sport and uh, politics, mate, they they just joined at the hip. That's that's reality. Yeah. Intricately linked, uh, and you, you mentioned sports washing. I mean, that's you got, you got a football World Cup in in Qatar. Last time it was in Russia. This is, I mean, sport and politics are linked there. Like it's you're having heavyweight title fights in, in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Right. There you go. Yeah. Um, live golf backed by the Saudis as well. Um, yeah. Any, any anyone really who says sports and politics aren't linked um, don't don't agree with that person's particular politics and that's why that's the only reason they're saying it 